fantastic. Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome back to my Minecraft Redstone tutorial series. Today we'll be carrying on looking at redstone and we'll be looking at some of the things you can do with it and how to use it, or at least the basics anyway. So let's get started with that. Now first things first, let's take a look at what redstone dust looks like. There's a piece of redstone dust in an item frame, looks quite happy there. Um, here are some many item frames. These item frames represent the crafting grid on crafting table so here we got a 3x3 three three grid and then you can craft stuff with it and this is the th same 3x3 three three grid so this is how I'm going to be de depicting crafting recipes in this series so in this chest oh we've got some redstone fantastic and as you can see here we can put every all the redstone in all the different things like that all different slots and it makes something and it makes a block of redstone and there you are, that's what a block of redstone looks like um, in an item frame. And um, you know, you, you can you can get your block of redstone, and uh, you can place it down on the ground, and you can you can build with it, and, and it does lots of other things. But we're going to come to that another time. But that is how you make a block of redstone. The reason why I mention that now at this time is it's very good for storage. If you have absolutely loads and loads and loads of redstone to carry around you can get your redstone put it into your redstone blocks and it takes up a ninth of the room in your inventory like that there we go okay so you see I've got 22 blocks here and when you want the dust back you can actually just place the dust back uh, the blocks back in your crafting and retrieve the same amount of dust it's it's a lossless storage system and a very good way of keeping and carrying redstone. So that's redstone blocks. What else can you do with redstone? Well, you can use it to craft various different things. Uh, you can use it in brewing. Um, this isn't a brewing tutorial, so I won't tell you about that. If you want to know more about that, head over to the Minecraft wiki and look up brewing. Um, you can use it to make a clock. So gold bars, round a piece of redstone dust, there's a clock in an item frame. Telling the time. Time is now a little bit past it? A little bit a little bit past sunrise. You can use uh, iron with redstone dust to make uh, compasses. And you can use it to make other things as well. This is how to make a piece of um oh, what's this one? This one is a piece of track. It's a piece of track with iron. But we're not here to do a tutorial about how you can craft everything with redstone. We're here to learn about redstone. But this is some examples uh, of how it can be used in recipes. In this particular recipe, you've got a pressure plate, uh, you've got iron, and you've got a piece of redstone there at the bottom of the crafting grid. So it can be used to craft various different things. But we're more interested in circuits like this. Oh. Now, we're going to do more about circuits in depth later on, but this is a very basic type of circuit. It has an input, uh, and then some wet redstone dust as part of the circuit, and then an output. So let's investigate some of these inputs and outputs. So we've got, these are redstone torches, we'll look at them soon uh, in more detail in a, in a coming up episode. And you can, as you can see here, the redstone torch is powering the dust. Because it's putting power into the circuit, it's called an input, even though it, the torch itself outputs a signal. It's just the way it's worded. And then uh, it travels along dust to an output. So if I put a piece of dust here, the signal will continue. And we've lit this light. Uh, we put a piece of dust here. We've activated a piston. And if we do this here. We've opened a gate. Opened a door. And if we get this circuit here and place a piece of TNT on the top. This one's a little bit more complex. We can activate it and fire the TNT. In fact, this is a this particular design can be used over and over again, which is quite handy. So, if you want to have a go at this, uh, download the uh, world with the link in the description, and you can play around with that to your heart's content. Um, so yes, I've I've just mentioned that you can place dust on the floor. This is what the dust looks like when you place it down. There, you are. just click down it goes. So you can see if you place dust next to dust, it changes the way the dust is laid out. So you can see here we've got dust side by side. You do that by placing a piece of dust next to it. Here we've got a T-junction, so you can do a T-junction just by placing dust in a T 
T-shape. A cross, yeah, that's pretty simple. And you can do all sorts of weird patterns with it. So you just whack it down on the ground to draw your circuits. Of course, it doesn't have to be flat ground. Here we've got dust going up uh, some blocks. When you place a piece of dust on a block, it will connect it down to the block beneath it, like that. Okay, so this piece of dust up here was connected down to this one, and this one was connected down to this one. It doesn't work on the lower half of half slab. So here we have a full block in front of us here, and we have a full block in the ground there. This is a half slab, you cannot place it on there. However, this half slab is on the top part of the block. So if we grab a block and put it at a full block, we've got full blocks, there we go. Uh, if we grab a full block and place it behind, you can see that the half slab is on the top of the block where this half slab was on the bottom. You can place it on a half slab on the top, like that. And this actually carries a signal. We'll look more into that later on, but just to demonstrate it, here is a redstone torch to produce a signal. So, signal goes up uh, there. It doesn't go up there because we're unable to place the dust. And it actually goes up here. It's a little bit weird, but that's just how it works. You can't place it on uh, right way upstairs, it's just not a flat enough surface. However, you can place it on upside down stairs, on the bottom of a step. So if you place a step upside down like this, you can then place redstone dust on it like that. And it can be placed on lots of things like clay, even ores. cannot be placed on things like glass and leaves, but can be placed on things like wood and uh, end stone. You can even place it on objects. However, to place it on objects, you need to hold shift. If I just click, we access this dispenser. If I hold shift and click on the top, the dust is now on the top and connected to the rest of the circuit. Same thing here with the crafting bench. We've got dust around the crafting bench. Can't click and put it on top. We go in the crafting recipe, hold shift, and away it goes. So, um, redstone dust can be placed on top of all, op plate, all opaque blocks, as well as glowstone, upside down stairs, upside down stabs, and hoppers. Okay, all opaque blocks plus those things there. And that brings us to the end of today's tutorial. We have looked at a little bit of what you can do with redstone. We can look, we've can look. we looked at a few things you can build with redstone. We've looked at how you can store redstone. We looked at some of the things you can do with basic circuits, how it's laid on the floor. Uh, we've looked at where it can be placed and what it can be placed on. Join us next time where we're going to start looking at inputs and we will start looking at how those inputs input a redstone signal into a circuit and the power that they give off. But that's going to be all for now. Any thoughts, ideas or questions, as always, down in the comments section below, along with any requests for future episodes in the series. That's all for now. Thank you very much. Take care. Goodbye.